so much. Uh, it's such an honor and such a pleasure to be part of the opening ceremony of the 50th World Economic Forum. And dear Klaus, for 50 years, you have brought together here in Davos the brightest people of our times. And for 50 years, your thinking has always been ahead of times. You have always had a vision on how to shape a better future for Europe and the world. Fifty years ago, indeed, you described a clash between two ideas of capitalism. These two ideas are widely known as, as you said, the shareholder capitalism and the stakeholder capitalism. The first model only cares about shareholder profit. The second, the one you always believed in, is about social responsibility. Responsibility towards workers and their families. Responsibility towards our environment. Responsibility towards society as a whole. Your father, dear Klaus, was a friend of Ludwig Erhard, you told me. And you said that his concept of soziale Marktwirtschaft, social market economy, shaped your early thinking. Indeed, in January 1971, when a group of European business leaders met for the very first time here in Davos, it was under the patronage of the European Commission. And they have been coming back here every January since then, setting the agenda for the year ahead. Just as Davos has gone from strength to strength, so has its partnership with the European Commission. For too long, humanity took away resources from the environment and in exchange produced waste and pollution. I believe, as you do, that we can reconcile our economy with our planet. We can reconcile human development with the protection of our home. But we can only do it together. Davos is the place where government, business and civil society join forces. And ladies and gentlemen, traditionally, Davos is a call for action to politicians and CEOs. But to make a truly global impact, we need a broad engagement by everyone. And more and more, Davos is becoming a place where civil society can make its voice heard. The voice of NGOs, the voice of scientists and the academic community, the voice of young leaders who are shaking our conscience and calling for action, I heard you. For 50 years, the World Economic Forum has always adapted to changing times while preserving its original spirit. I'm convinced, Madam President, that your clearly defined strategy and visionary leadership will benefit the Commission and the future of Europe. The priorities that you have set for the European Union are consequential. Europe has the potential to provide global leadership to, on the challenges we need to address urgently. Climate change, the fourth industrial revolution, inclusive digitalization, growth, competitiveness, as well as Europe's role in the world. I deeply believe that reconciling our planet and our economy with the goal of achieving the first climate neutral continent will serve and has to serve as a global role model for sustainable capitalism. I look forward to witnessing the transformational journey under your leadership 
Madam President. The World Economic Forum's so-called Global Risk Report identifies that the top five risks for our economy are all climate related. There is still scope to address these risks, but the window of opportunity is rapidly closing. We have to act now. And this is the reason why the European Commission presented as its first priority the European Green Deal. Europe will be the world's first climate neutral continent by 2050. And it will do whatever it takes to unlock the investment, the innovation, and the creativity that is needed. Over the next decade, the European budget will mobilize one trillion euro of investment. It's going to be European money, national co-financing, private investment. This is you who we need to join. And of course, strongly supported by the European Investment Bank. This is our climate bank. And this will create a green investment wave. And there's a demand for it. Last month, 44 of Europe's largest investors representing 6 trillion euro of assets, called on the European Union to put climate neutrality into law. They want that law. They say they need that law because it will give them the confidence, the accountability, and the reliability to make long-term investments. The European Green Deal is our new growth strategy. California, for example, is showing the way with an emission trading system that covers 85% of CO2 emissions. And I also commend China for taking the first steps towards a CO2 pricing system. And these may be only first steps towards a level playing field. But if we achieve a global pricing for CO2 or for greenhouse gas emissions, if it turns into a global trend, we will have a global level playing field where no carbon border tax is needed anymore. And this is an example of a new modern international framework we need. But we must also do more when it comes to managing crises as they develop. And for that, Europe also needs credible military capabilities, and we have set up the building blocks of a European Defence Union. It is complementary to NATO, and it is different. There is a European way to foreign policy and foreign security policy, where hot power is an important tool, without any question, but it is never the only one. Hard power always comes with diplomacy and conflict prevention. It always comes with reconciliation and reconstruction, which is, by the way, something European, Europeans know very well because we all have gone through this here in Europe.